Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi and here I like to talk about luxury beauty and I have to say I have always been a huge fan of Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. This is just some of mine. I have always bought from all of her launches until now and let me explain why. So from the beginning when Lisa Eldridge began her makeup line, I have always bought everything that I could during her launches. You know, things sell out quickly and the only thing I have ever missed until I stopped at the blush launch. That was the last time I purchased everything. And when I say everything, I mean, I even bought all four of the highlighters, even though they weren't going to work for me. That was the last time I purchased everything from one of her launches. The only thing I ever missed out on was the original Go Lightly, which just sold out too fast for me. But with her new lipstick launch, you know, I, I've always liked her lipsticks. You know, for, for a while there, they were one of my favorites. Her velvets were like incredible but I've decided no longer to purchase them. And I'd have to say the main reason why is because of breakage. So I know other people have had this issue as well. For some reason, I seem to hear more of this from people who live in the US like I do. And I, from like UK creators and people in the UK, I haven't heard that much about them experiencing breakage. So I don't know if there's an issue you know, they do have a U.S. warehouse now, um, but in the past they used to ship overseas. So I don't know if, you know, I don't know what, what it is, but a lot of my lipsticks break. So on my lips right now, I have a mix of Skyscraper Rose and Rainbow Spill, which are two of my favorites. And these are her like insanely saturated lip colors. But I mean, you can see here that this is broken. It's just sitting in here. And I have to be really careful putting this on. You can see how messy it gets around the tube. I usually end up having to use a brush with this. Meanwhile, this one here, this one is uh, my skyscraper rose. This one has not broken, but approximately half of my velvets and insanely saturated colors have broken. Now my luxuriously lucent ones that are newer, I those are in great shape. I have to say though, I've only worn those a couple of times. And there's a reason for that that we're going to get into. First, I'd like to show you some swatches of Skyscraper Rose and Rainbow Spill, along with a lip liner that I love. So you can kind of get a similar look if you don't want to purchase these lipsticks. So this here is Rainbow Spill. You can see that it has a kind of like a velvety look to it. It's not technically one of her velvet lipsticks, but it does have a similar vibe to that. I don't find it as drying. This one is Skyscraper Rose. You can see that Rainbow Spill is going to be warmer. Skyscraper Rose definitely has more blue in it. And this lip liner is one of the Chanel lip liners. This is 182 Rose Framboise. So on one side you have a lip brush, incredibly useful. And then it does, it comes with a sharpener by the way, but this is the actual lip liner. And you can see how it's really a great, it's very close to skyscraper rose but it has a little warmth so it's almost like a say like 70 30 mix 70 percent skyscraper rose 30 percent rainbow spill mix and i think this is a great way to get the same type of color with those lipsticks with less breakage plus you know you have to wear this color a lot to really use that up you're more likely to use up the lip pencil versus the lipsticks or at least i am now, I'd like to mention a little bit about the breakage issue. So uh, until just recently when I decided not really to use these anymore, I have always stored these upright, just kind of displayed on my vanity, you know, taking very good care of them. They haven't been tossed in a drawer or anything like that. And they're still breaking. So this one here is my Velvet Dragon. You can see how messed up this is. But I have to say, you know, this when I ordered Velvet Dragon, it came broken and they replaced it right away. I just emailed them and they sent me a new one, new one right away. I, unfortunately, the new one also broke shortly thereafter and I did not contact them to ask for another replacement because I didn't want to, to waste the product. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up that if you do have breakage, especially early on, they are very responsive about sending a replacement. My problem is I don't want to keep getting replacements for things. And sometimes I'll break a little bit later. And, you know, after I've used it for a while, I don't want to contact a company for a replacement. 
So I'd really rather just have this problem fixed. And I have since found that there are other lipsticks that I prefer to these. Now, when the Lisa Eldridge Velvets came out, I have to say they were revolutionary. This one here, Velvet Ribbon, this is my favorite. This is one of the original reds she came out with. I have to say, I absolutely love the color. It is like a perfect cooler tone red for me. Um, again, mine has broken since then. And my favorite more neutral shade, which really isn't all that nude or neutral, is Velvet Muse. So these are my two favorites. And you can see just on my arm how velvety the formulas are. They look fantastic, but they are a little bit dry. Now, when these first came out, they were nowhere near as dry as your typical matte lipstick. The velvet lipstick was a new thing. And, you know, these were like the first of its kind in the industry. So I have to admit, I loved them. I wore them all the time. Uh, you know, the first batch that I received of the originals with Velvet Ribbon and everything, they took a lot longer to display any signs of breakage than more recent purchases have. So I'm not sure what the, the difference is. It could have just been luck, but you know, I absolutely love them. Over time though, I feel like better formulas have since come out. So let me share a few of those with you. In my opinion, one of the best Velvet formulas is from Givenchy. So this one here is number 36, Lantardi. I'll show you that right here. This is gonna be a warmer red. It is gorgeous. And I use this all the time. I absolutely love this shade. I haven't experienced breakage of this. I have to say, I've used this a lot. I've had it for a couple of years. It is just starting to feel a little wobbly in the tube, but not to the point of breakage yet. So there might be something with velvet formulas in general, but regardless, I've been able to get more wear and more use out of this than I have from any of my Lisa Eldridge ones before breakage. This one here, I just wanted to share this shade because it's gorgeous, but this is 14, Rose Boise. So again, it's the Givenchy Velvet. These are more hydrating on my lips than the Lisa Eldridge. So I don't find them drying at all. And they give you that same gorgeous velvety finish and they're very comfortable. One thing to note though, Givenchy lipsticks do have fragrance. And if you're looking for a velvet, particularly in reds, I would highly recommend the Guerlain velvets, particularly their collection of legendary reds, if you can find any of those. There are only three shades in the collection. I've seen two, two are still available right now. The third one is hard to pin down, but the colors I feel like have just more they have more depth. There are more mix of pigments. One of the great things about Lisa Eldridge lipsticks when they first came out was the way that she really mixed those undertones. And the original shades that she came out with, they worked very well on so many different skin tones because of the way that she mixed different undertones and overtones in there. So they look a little bit different on everybody. I feel like the more recent launches, that really hasn't been as evident as it was with the original colors. And that's one of the reasons why Skyscraper Rose and Rainbow Spill, I think are such successful colors, even more so than some of her more recent shades of a similar vein like uh, Velvet Carnival. So the Guerlain reds, those also have that complexity of color and those nuances in there that I feel like are really great. And I have not had any breakage from any of the Guerlain Velvets. Guerlain Velvets are still a relatively new line. They came out just this past, uh, it hasn't quite been a year yet. <laughs> so they came out then, the, the Legendary Reds collection just came out earlier this year and they are all fantastic. I do have to say that certain shades in them can be a little drying, but again, I still find my Lisa Eldridge to be more drying than the Guerlain. Another matte lipstick that I would love to share with you are the Dries Van Noten matte lipsticks. This one here is, sorry, a hair. This one here is number 75, Craft It Red. It's a little bit warmer, but you can see, although it's technically a matte and not a velvet, it does have a bit of that velvety appearance. Not quite as strong of a velvet vibe, in my opinion, but it's incredibly comfortable on the lips. And these are definitely one of the best, in my opinion. And I feel like the shades in Dries Van Noten are more unique. They have those nuances. 
that we got with the original shades from Lisa Eldridge. And as a matter of fact, I think some of the Dries Van Noten shades are similar to some that she is launching in this new collection. So Lisa Eldridge is launching a shade called Strawberry Shock. And it is one of the insanely saturated shades like Rainbow Spill and Skyscraper Rose. And it reminds me a lot of this shade from Dries Van Noten, which is called Punk Vermilion. And you can see that you kind of have a little bit of this vibrant punk pink mixed in with a red. This, I feel like, looks very similar to the Strawberry Shock shade that she's releasing. And if I had to choose between the two of them, I'd go with the Dries Van Noten because, I mean, you've got gorgeous packaging. This one's mixed and matched, but you get to pick your own packaging. You, um, you know, they're refillable. So that's a plus as well. So you just, you know, put that in. And then in addition, I have not experienced any breakage. Now, again, these are newer. It could happen in time, but with how quickly mine have been breaking from Lisa Eldridge, I have to say that I think these are better. Plus they're more comfortable on my lips. So I hope that gives you a few alternatives uh, if you uh, are interested in some of the colors from Lisa Eldridge, but perhaps you would like to try a different formula, I would definitely check out some of those brands and formulas. Take a look at the colors and see what you like from there. Now, moving on to the Luxuriously Lucent, this is Love of My Life, which was her original, this was the original Luxuriously Lucent lip color that came out like with back was it the first launch or the second launch like ever many years ago and then last summer she came out with some new ones this one here's rose official and i just want to show you it's a little bit hard to see let me swatch another one here this one here is dance card these are gorgeous like sheer shades but if you look at the original versus the two newer ones the two the newer ones for me and you know it could be a batch issue so i know some people have absolutely loved them and not experienced this but mine are a little bit oilier in texture they're a little bit thinner in texture as well and they can look a little bit patchy at times so it's something to know i haven't loved this latest collection of luxuriously loosens so with her new launch of new shades i've decided to pass on those in favor of in favor of more Dries Van Noen lipsticks. So Dries Van Noen actually has matte, sheer, and satin lipsticks. This one here is 03 in the sheer formula. You can see how sheer it is, but you can also see how uniform in color it is there. This one is 03 Silent Nude. Let me show you. This is one of the satin shades in 14 Romantic Nude. And you can see how much more pigmented those are. So you can just get an idea between sheer and satin. But I feel like these formulas are just more comfortable on the lips. The sheer ones, there aren't a ton of shades. So definitely if you are looking for a particular shade, you're better off finding a shade in Lisa Eldridge. But I do think that the Dries Van Noten formula is superior. Now some other formula alternatives. This is going to be a little bit thicker. These are the Sisley these are the Fido, Shine, Fido Rouge Shine. This one here is number 11, Sheer Blossom. And you can see that is going to be a little bit thicker. It's also a shinier finish. But again, you can get that sheer lip look with uniformity. We also have the Chanel Lip Balms. These are the Rouge Coco Balms. This one's 914 Natural Charm, I believe. Yes. And you can see that you're going to get something nice and sheer. It is buildable. You want to build it up. But again, you're going to get fairly even pigmentation, yet it doesn't feel as oily as the Lisa Eldridge do for me. The Lisa Eldridge actually remind me a little bit more of the Chanel Rouge Coco Flashes, which are more of a lip oil, lip balm uh, kind of blend. This is 172 Flanair. Let's do that again. You can see you get this really beautiful, you know, sheer color here. You get a ton of, they have a ton of different shades. You can build it up, but this is going to be a little bit thinner, a little bit oilier. So I do think it's all about what texture you're looking for, but I do want to note that my original Luxuriously Lucent feels more balmy, whereas the newer ones feel oilier for me. 
Now, I would like to mention that this video is not intended to dissuade anyone from purchasing the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. If you love them and you've tried them, definitely go ahead and pick up some more. You know, they are definitely a nice product, um, but I have experienced frustrations with these products. And I know there are a lot of people who've been very eager to try these, but they haven't taken the plunge yet. So I really wanted to provide some alternatives in case that has happened. You know, perhaps you can find something a little bit less expensive for you. And I also wanted to kind of reach out to the people who have experienced the same frustrations that I have with breakage, because there are definitely some better alternatives out there now. I would have to say her lipsticks in general, particularly the velvets, were kind of groundbreaking in a sense, you know, when they first launched. But since that time, better formulas have come out. We, you know, colors, there are so many colors available from so many different brands. I feel like you can find what you want from another brand for the most part. So it's really about personal preferences. But I've been getting a ton of questions about whether I'm purchasing these new lipsticks and whether or not, you know, when I say no, <laughs> I get a ton of questions why. So I really wanted to take a minute to just explain why and to provide some alternatives for people who are interested in finding something similar, but something that perhaps might work better for them. So I hope this was helpful. Please let me know. And I definitely, I do have a video, I'll link it down below with all of the Lisa Eldridge lipsticks until this launch swatched. So I will share that down below if you're interested in looking at her lipsticks. Definitely ch check out that video, check out the swatches, and I will see you very soon. So have a wonderful day and happy shopping if you choose to.